<clears throat> Good evening, heroes and heroines, and welcome to practicing programming in C. There's nothing to enhance at all, so I might as well just get the music on and get on with it. Actually, there's a little thing to announce, I suppose. I managed to get the HMML to YouTube converter working kind of perfectly. Um, so I think I'll be able to switch over to that uh, next time I next time I do some some annotation writing. Uh, I managed to get stuff like references being correctly kind of uh, formatted. Uh, what else have I forgot? There should be some like situations with chat comments happening. There was a bit of a there's some stuff with chat comments and references all rolled into one and I had to kind of nail down the logic for those things. Um, but as you can see, well, I, mean, I don't know if you can tell, but this is kind of it's kind of the format that um, it's the format that uh, Sean came up with for the for the YouTube description uh, conversion. Uh, yeah, there aren't any really, there aren't any multiple ref. Things that I think. Um, maybe there's one for Risky. Let's have a look. Uh, so yeah, okay. So there's here's some like mid, mid text refs. So they have that, and then they finish off with more text. Obviously, they're all end of text. And this is a this is a great big long one, with multiple, multiple refs per text node. Uh, so this is all on one line. Mind that isn't very, it's not very uh, readable, I don't think. But anyway, I kind of managed managed to get everything formatting as I wanted to. So yeah, that is a. Uh, oh, Asaf has got home just in time. That is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. We had a successful day. So yeah, right. Here we go. HMML to HTML. And I believe the only thing I was missing yesterday was the the little bit of JavaScript at the bottom of the at the bottom of this file. Uh, because I wasn't actually wasn't actually outputting the right the the function that's needed to highlight the references. So for that, I need to open up. Uh, let's see. I believe it was in Risky Player. Uh, yeah, I might have a, quite a bit of that actually. Swap files popping up because I had to hard power off my machine before. So let's open up also my out.html. So this ends with this stuff. So it's got the new player, uh, well, I'm not quite sure what you consider it really. Add event listener, so it's got the add event listener and then the end of the script. So this thing has the add event listener and then it has this stuff. Right, so I believe I'm going to have to generate this. But I think this stuff... Actually, that's interesting. 
rough time codes. Data timestamp. The ref mapping is just a hack to get around the fact that I don't have proper parsing. Hmm, <laughs> right. Okay. So I could potentially... Well, hang on a minute. Ref mapping ref. The actual ref is equal to that. Actual ref is not equal to undefined. Press container for ref's length. So this is going to be looping over all the refs. And if the ref is the current ref, then we make we just add, do class list add current. I see. The block with ref time codes. Allows you to click on the time code next to each reference to jump to it. A plot with ref time codes. Right. So. Just like that. The book that I'm referring to is uh, Code by Charles. So got a nicely highlight like that. Let's see um, logic gates. I'm going to see the symbols because I don't remember the. <laughs> Just so awesome. Like that. Now that. So what I'm saying is something like that. Okay. And the same as we've to jump to it. So I will definitely need this, won't I? Let's um, let's get this into my script first of all. Pretty sure I will need that at least. Guess you can keep the click to jump though. Okay, the whole thing might look nice if you replace the time codes with a large font index. All right, let's um, let's try that. So we've come down here. We've done this, and it's at this point. We want to paste this stuff in. Right. So, var i equals zero. Yeah, and this is just literally... This is its own thing, so I just... This will... I don't need to compute any of this, I don't think. I just need to uh, put it in the file. And then... It's... Uh, Norm, end of line, append. Well, actually, hang on a minute. Why don't I just norm, append, a new line, and then that? Yeah, cool. And then it should finish with the script. That looks good to me. Also, I might just do this. I need to go through this and change. I mean, I could change it to the single quote, couldn't I? Um, but I will just keep doing it like this.
So that looks reasonable to me, I think. Should I do myself a new line there, I wonder? So let's use Risky 12 again. No output means success, obviously. And then if I load up my outdoor HTML, what we're saying here is that this is going to enable this thing to jump to the timecode. Wow, okay. So presumably that's just because I haven't set up the I haven't set up the thing properly. Let's just uh, open out HTML. So we have got this document event listener. We have time codes. Take a look at the console output. Ah, okay, I can't. Or can I actually? Um, console. Do. Inspector. Maybe it's inspector. Let's try. Debugging is not enabled. Okay. So let's open up a private Firefox window just so it, it doesn't have to load a load of tabs. So that tried to open up the code, oh, the uh, the link. That's trying to open up the link as well. That's interesting. So I've, have I just loaded up a couple of? Uh, yeah, right. Well, that's interesting. How it kind of died the first time. It kind of half succeeded the second time, and then I finally got like the actual full page the third time. <laughs> So that's what was happening with that. Whereas like this one was going to there properly. Hmm. So yeah, there's no console output at all. So you can get parameter, parameter, invalid enum value. Enum. Okay. So. I suppose actually it's in this file, isn't it? This is that for to display. Okay, so reference error, risky player is not defined. All ah, right, of course. So it's not risky player, it is, um, and why is this? Uh, where am I? Right, yeah. So it's not risky player, it's just player, I believe. Uh, 
There we go. Fail to execute post message on DOM window. The target origin provided HTTPS uh, com does not match the recipient window's origin. Okay. So... That was jumping about, wasn't it? Yeah. Jumps there. Jumps here. Jumps down there. Jump to two compliments. <laughs> just so fantastic that it just... Works, <laughs> you know. So, the next task... Is... Um, the next task is to get the stuff actually um, get these these guys communicating uh, in the other direction. <laughs> so yeah, that's so cool. That's cool. So that when we're on one of these, it lights up like that, which my one doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Um, how much RAM have I got? Under a gig. Uh, the YouTube iframe communicates with the main frame through post message and it sometimes has errors. You can ignore that, okay. All right, cool. So, yeah, right. That was a pretty good start. <laughs> so now I need to I'll tell you what, I might just do some hard coding of stuff so I can actually see what's happening. So if I switch to this, and it was this hack. And the ref mapping here, this is a this is a mapping of stuff that I have actually kind of created. So if I just go back up and have a look at Oh is it's only risky player? No. No. So what was it called? It, it was like ref. Data ref is what it was. Data ref. And when we're talking about data refs, we're talking about these guys, I believe. It's these. So data ref two maps to zero, the zeroth reference in the in the references thing. So if I have a, a, a 2, it should light up the 0 with 1. Which means that if I click on research logic gates, it should highlight the top one, I think. Oh, 
Oh, interesting. Who calls on ref changed? That's a very good question. So, right, I see. So we've got this function here. So this is a function in the script. Let's see if I can find anyone in here. Risky player. Initialize YouTube. All oh, right. Initialize YouTube. What what line is this on? Oh, it's just above there. I see. So initialize YouTube. Bar player. So it's interesting. Is this just in the play.js then? Initialize YouTube is there. So Initialize Player initialize YouTube Risky player Play dot initialize each. So it's not the calling site of player initialize YouTube that I'm after, it's the um it's this. Play it and slash like YouTube. Let's just um, let's copy this into there so I can compare it. Initialize YouTube equals function callback. Wow. Um, gosh, this is totally different. Where am I? Again? This is player.js. And I've just pulled that from riskyplayer.html. So, okay. The word JavaScript syntax is confusing me. I think it is, yeah. Dot initialize YouTube. What we're we looking at? Yeah, I mean this is different in that player initialize YouTube is equal to function callback, but this one is player dot initialize YouTube. Full stop. The code in Risky Player calls player dot initialize YouTube for a slight optimization. Not relevant in my case. Right below that, we're doing some XHR work, but it's not related to initialize YouTube. Oh, I see. I see, right, got, got you. Got 
Goddamn, what's going on? It calls this. Right, I see. So this is calling it. So I need to find where initialize YouTube. Uh, well, hang on a minute. What do I need to find? Uh, who calls on ref changed? Right. So I think I can get rid of this again. Yeah. From player.js. So if I go back to um, risky player uh, and see who calls on ref changed. Oh, sorry, right. It's the XHR, isn't it? <laughs> right, I think. Or, what is Risky Player? The player, new player, done. Risky Player equal to new player. Document query selector, dot player to container. On ref changed. This is player.js. Add event listener, resize function, player update size. Query selector. Hang on a minute. There we go. There's the there's the guy. Right. I think I've, I think I've cracked it. <laughs> on ref change. So, yeah. Oh, hang on. Oh yeah, update HTML. So, yeah, I can trivially add that to the thing. But let's just see if that does what I expect now. Expected expression. Oh, right. I see. Something broke completely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was an expected closing parentheses. Just. Uh, ah, right. Yeah, I see. I think that's what was the matter there. Yeah. So I think I said research logic gates, didn't I? Yeah, right. Okay, awesome. So I'm in I'm understanding that. Alright, so now that I've got that, let us let's get this little line. Of the onref changes, it let's get this into the actual file. <laughs> These small victories. <laughs> so var player is what I'm looking for. Yeah, this is this line. So instead of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that looks legit to me. And also, while we're here, let's just start doing a bit of this cleanup. So the script is its, is a, is its first tag. Let me see if I can line these guys up. So I think the script goes 8 in. Which means that this needs to go 12 in. Oh. And then this needs to go 16 in. Which means that that's not part of that code. So, yeah, right. I suppose I could just do is <laughs> getting those. Where's where's our data HTML? Let's see what this. So if I put is that going to indent it at all? As I'd expect. Not really. <laughs> Maybe I just. Maybe I shouldn't bother, <laughs> honestly. It's kind of, kind of superficial. But now I've got the omref change thing there. Um, what have I got in my out again? So I put the omref, I, so I've hard coded this. I just pasted that in. I could put the ref time code. Did I put the ref time codes in? I wonder. I did put that in. Okay, so basically, if I am. Because I know that I need to. Well. Let me build that file again. And then copy on ref changed into it. Research logic gates. Yeah, awesome. So it's just a case now of marrying up these ref mappings with the actual annotation, uh, with the actual references. So these ref, ref mappings are the line numbers corresponding to the annotations. And they are hard coding.
they're just straight up saying that this marker here is at line six, is it? Well, sorry, this is my code, isn't it? So if we look at risky, was it on ref? What's it called? Data ref. So this is saying that this is on line zero. This is saying that this guy's on line three. That's on line one. That's on line two. Is that correct? I mean, because if that's on line one, this should be a new line, shouldn't it? Unless maybe I'm misunderstanding exactly what it's doing. Data ref. Uh, so there's one there. Data ref zero. Ah, I think I see. It's doing one for every content marker. Uh, every content div. Oh, well. Well, every marker div, rather. Yeah, there we go again, we've got another marker div. And here we have another marker div again. Right. So there's three marker divs per annotation. So that suggests that the... The ones that we're interested in are going to be multiples of three. Um, so that's the third, that's the sixth, that's the eleventh, that's the fifteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth and seventeenth, okay. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Hmm. But I've discovered that the ref map, so, yeah, so this number here corresponds with the top, corresponds with the zero I think, in the reference. So what I could say is, um, mind you, on ref change needs to have this table, doesn't it? Actually, I suppose I could, if I were to marry them up anyway, and say, mind you, because the, because the, the situation was going to be, Let's just sketch out what I'm actually kind of driving at here. So the references thing is actually going to, it's going to be, it's going to be the References in chronological order. So we've got the references drop down. So it's like the content of the ref nodes chronological order.
If there's a duplicate. Um, yeah, if there's a duplicate ref, then it's, um, it's time code will be added to an existing entry in the references list. So that's another part of the process. I need to actually, I need to figure out the deduplication part of it. But for now, let's just try and get the references just showing up in the in the list. Just a bit. Um, Just like, why is that so long? So basically, we just want to go through all of the references and get them all into here, whether or not they're duplicates. So get them in here with that. And I have done that, right? I have built that. So what we're looking at here, this is reference number zero. This is, so these are all actually indexed so that they, these guys all have an index. So what we're saying is when we encounter one well hang on a minute if I just because I, um, I'm just thinking that I have put the um, the data ref into the into time code into the um, you know into these guys you know, if they're if they're a reference, or it's a quote. Okay. Let me do a data ref. Or it's a quote. I wonder if that will throw things off actually. <clears throat> so what I'm kind of thinking is if I were to just if I just go back to here and I just change these mappings so that it is just one to one will this just work? It's off by one. And that's because we've got a quote. So let's um, go back to the quote. And just take away this part of it. Take away that. Rebuild, regenerate, and copy the thing back into out.html. And then for all of these, I just want to say one. Correct. Because it would be we can't add it yet. One's complement, two's complement. So we go to two. 
set of declaration of expressions. And also, like, click on that and make sure that, yeah, that highlights. Okay, so what we're looking at here then is this table being redundant. This is redundant, so I should just be able to straight up copy this this into my file, shouldn't I? Ref mapping. Ref mapping. Actual ref is going to be so uh, the actual ref is just is just the actual ref. JavaScript has a pass int function. Okay. Right, I see. So, so I'll be passing in the <clears throat> I'll be passing in the reference count. Ref is always a string because it comes from a HTML attribute. Right. Okay. So if I were to say the actual ref Gosh It's going to be a string Well hang on a second Ref. Like, I got a bit. Actual ref has been the ref mapping ref. Where should I say? Let's add current. So, if it's not undefined, rest length. It's always a string. Ref. So you're passing in the ref. Right, I see. So you pass in the ref. So I need to pass in the ref. So, right, I see. So the actual ref is going to be um, pass int on the ref. And then that's just it, isn't it? Um, so if the result of pass int ref is not undefined 
then we do this stuff. I think this looks okay to me. Ref dot length. Refs dot length. So that's all right. So var refs is query selector all. It's querying all the refs dot ref. Right. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Passing is kind of annoying. He tries to guess the base of the number from the string. So zero twenty three will be passed as octal. You can call passing ref ten. It's positive base ten. Oh gosh. Okay. All right. So I th well actually, can I just try this now? I wonder. Yeah. Awesome. The book that Mia is referring to. Let's see, um, Dude, this is it, isn't it? On ref change. Uh, past so that that was all it was. Wow. So I'm gonna second. I'm super pumped now. All I need to do is copy all this guy, all this stuff, into my H HTML. To think of a converter. I need to pop it in here. Right. Let's do one of those. And for all of these lines, I want to do insert that. And for all of these, I want to do norm append a new line. And that. And should we give it a new line at the end? Yeah, let's give it a new line. Just to be just to be nice. So we want to go through here, do that. And now we're just doing the old little finger typing exercise think that's correct yeah so the upshot of that is that I should be able to build that refresh this And it should just work. And it does. Gosh. The book. Let's see, um, logic games. Wow. Something like that. No, so, gosh. Definitely overcomplicated, I think. Uh, so, what I'm saying is. Ah, hang on a minute. He's still. He's still highlight. Propagation of the character through our circuit. That shouldn't be highlight. So, what is. What is the actual demo doing? Yeah, right. I see. So, oh, on ref changed, right, yeah. Uh, right, well, I'll tell you what. This might be kind of a nifty way of doing this. Oh, well, just say, yeah, say just for every one of them. If it's a reference, just put um, ref is minus one or something, because that will satisfy the else, I think. Or well, hang on a minute. If it's if actual ref is undefined, uh, 
Let's just have a look at what's actually happening there. Yeah. Well, hang on a sec. On ref changed. <clears throat> so we're passing in the ref. You want it you want to do it if Ah Ah okay. So if actual re if, if well, yeah. So if re I say you're right. So if ref is undefined and put the passing on in under there. If ref is undefined and ref is not equal to null, then do that. Gosh, really? Because I was thinking of all sorts of crazy situations scenarios like thinking that I'd have to maybe make this the following annotation return something Hang on a sec. so that has definitely re refreshed yeah right awesome Just so beautiful. So that's part one of the stream. I think that's totally that's totally it. reference link gosh so that would be like so you're going along so well I don't, let's just refresh it so you click on this Oh, oh! I'll tell you what. Maybe I haven't actually done it fully. So that is working. Oh, sorry, I wasn't clicking on the right thing. 